Hi students, this is DV Subramaniam. Welcome to Sreshta for CA and CMA. In this lecture, I cover Factories Act revision. So, Factories Act, title of the Act, Factories Act 1948, extend to all the factories established in India, whole of India, coming to the area wise, whole of India, including Jammu and Kashmir. And date of implementation of this Act. 1st April 1949 although Factories Act was enacted in the year 1948 but implementation a little bit late so it got implemented with effect from 1st April 1949 and the main objective of this act is to ensure adequate safety measures and promote health and welfare measures on workers employed in the factory see as an employer I can give two benefits to the employee one is monetary the other one is non-monetary coming to the monetary salary bonus, gratuity, allowances, perquisites, all this comes under monetary benefits. But coming to the non-monetary benefits, non-monetary benefits, so ensuring safety measures of the workers employed in the factory and providing health measures, welfare measures to the workers employed in the factory, these all comes under non-monetary benefits. The main purpose of enactment of this act is to prevent employers who exploit employees in a bad manner without providing uh, adequate measures so sometimes greedy employers they try to exploit employees as much as possible so the caution the act provides caution to them so first of all this act is applicable to factory yes sir factory what is a factory sir what is a factory now any premises including prisons so simply land and building land and building and its surroundings presence means surroundings any premises including presence now where 10 or more employees 10 or more workers are employed or 20 or more workers employed depending upon usage of power so with the aid of power 10 or more workers without aid of power 20 or more workers and some manufacturing processes being carried on or ordinarily being uh, carried out ordinarily being carried on that means that means in 365 days, only 300 days we run the factory, sir. 65 days maintenance time, sir. Now, during that 65 days, is it a factory or not a factory, sir? Yes, it is a factory. Yes, it is a factory. So, here the point is carried out or being carried out. Carried out or being carried out. So, there should be a manufacturing process. So, with this, you know, a raw material comes uh, becomes a finisher product. The process which we take up as a result raw material is being converted into finisher products this is nothing but manufacturing process and how many workers are required sir if that manufacturing process requires power 10 or more workers without power 20 or more workers take handloom industries take handloom industries so, some industries you know without aid of power they run manufacturing process like uh, manufacturing garments handmade garments understood so they are 20 and you know premises including surroundings if these three conditions are satisfied we call it as factory once factories act is applicable forever it is applicable it is immaterial whether number of workers came down to 10 came down to below 10 or below 20 it is immaterial once applicable always applicable suppose mine mine i started a, a paper manufacturing entity so paper plates manufacturing entity and I recruited only two workers. Even though manufacturing process is carried out, it is not a factory because only two people were recruited. Now, in a season, I recruited additional 10 people. Additional 10 people I recruited. Now, 10 plus 2, 12. Factory Act applicable or not applicable, sir? Applicable. Factory Act is applicable. Sir, next month, it came down to three members, sir. But still, Factory Act is uh, applicable. But while reading a uh, factory definition, certain industries are excluded that is first one mines next one railway running shed railway running shed next one mobile unit of armed forces of union armed forces of union and next one hotel restaurant eating places so don't think that sir uh, why these are excluded from the definition of factory you know uh, privileges so don't think like that no they had separate set of rules and regulations for mines you know there is a mines act and railway running shed you know cleaning uh, railways 
or maintaining the railways in a good condition so for them separate set of rules and regulations are there and coming to the armed forces of union you had three for we had three forces sir uh, air force navy force army and coming to the hotel restaurant separate regulation is there you know fssai food safety standards authority of india so it will regulate the uh, restaurants so these are already covered under separate rules and regulations that's why we are not uh, applying factories act this to to these uh, entities next one sir whose responsibility sir whose responsibility to maintain i mean to uh, ensure safety measures to provide uh, health measures and welfare measures to the workers engaged in the employment or engaged in the factory whose responsibility sir occupier responsibility then who is an occupier sir one who has ultimate control over affairs of the factory the person who is having ultimate uh, control over affairs of the factory we call him as occupier uh, we had few cases in case of partnership firm any individual partner not you know artificial or body corporate any individual partner individual association of individuals any individual member any individual member now coming to the company any director any director shall be treated as occupier and coming to the factory which is a belonging to or under the control of central government state government local authority now person or persons so appointed by central government or state government or local authority to control affairs of the factory to control affairs of the factory so appointed person shall be deemed to be occupier now that person is having responsibilities to provide safety health and welfare measures it's coming to the ship manufacturing or ship repair or ship maintenance works so are they for hire or owned by the entity owned by the entity you know owner and no no sir no they are uh, hire purpose you know they took we took ships on hire basis uh, let me give a small example uh, orange travels or morning sir travels just now i bought some 10 vehicles i want to rent those 10 vehicles uh, uh, under uh, morning star or orange travels so what i'll do sir i'll enter into contract with morning star travels and i'll supply 10 vehicles sir please use my 10 vehicles under your uh, brand now those people will use the vehicles in transporting goods or you know uh, for passengers tra traveling now the point is who is the owner of the vehicle sir actually i am the owner of vehicles so i should be treated as occupier but i am not using them in my business i am giving them on higher basis in that case you know who is the owner of morning star travels he shall be deemed to be occupier of the industry i mean occupier of the hmm. so just for your understanding i told you but coming to this case you know ship sent for repair or some maintenance work is carried on the, of the ship now owner of the dock shall be the occupier or owner of the ship or owner's agent or master of the ship master of the ship captain or any other officer in charge so who is in charge to the ship he shall be treated as a employer or finally any person who contracts with the above people he will also be treated as occupier if if these people are not taking the position of occupier if these people are not taking the position of the occupier then who entered into contract with owner agent master officer in charge so we we shall treat that person as a occupier of the factory so construction of ship repairing the ship definitely heavy task next sir who is a worker sir who is a worker any person for the time being any person employed directly or indirectly so indirectly means through agency or through contractor through agency or through contractor either with or without knowledge of principal employer so principal employer means ultimate employer principal employer you know occupier of the factory down the line intermediate immediate employer immediate employer down the line workers so immediate employer recruiting workers and sending to the principal employer and now the joining you know worker joined our factory this matter it is immaterial whether principal employer is having knowledge or not suppose take uh, reliance industry limited so daily some five recruitments will take place do you think that mukesh ambani sir will know all these uh, recruitments and no so with or without principal knowledge principal employer knowledge and for 
remuneration or not sometimes you know we provide shelter we provide food facilities we provide all the facilities and we won't pay any remuneration so it is immaterial whether he is working for remuneration or for other facilities but he should be engaged in manufacturing process or cleaning part you know cleaning of machinery cleaning of premises or any work incidental to it or connected to it incidental to it or connected to it now combine the definition any person employed directly or indirectly with or without knowledge of principal employer for remuneration or not for remuneration engaged in manufacturing process you know work engaged in manufacturing process or any cleaning part any incidental task or connected work or connected work so by this it is very clear you know people engaged in sales marketing finance which is not connected with manufacturing process we won't consider worker under work factory sack 1948 of course they may be employees they may be workers but they won't come under factory sack 1948 workers clear so worker excludes a member of armed forces of union so member of armed forces of union is not covered i told you already covered under separate rules and regulations next one next one manufacturing process so it is defined in an exhaustive manner but you know important words important words are i'm giving you in this lecture so making of a good repairing an article altering an article ornamenting so pumping oil water sewage and then generating transform transmit power printing construction and repair of ships and vessels preserving articles in cold storage i told you many times you know doing something that raw material comes into the position of finished product the doing something is nothing but manufacturing process you might be you might service it suppose my bike i purchased it one year back now it is not in a good condition i took it to the service center they made repair no it will also comes under manufacturing process it will also comes under manufacturing process and then pumping oil water sewage you know pumping comes under manufacturing process the raw material we are keeping it in usage next one power generation power transformation uh, power transform and power transmission one small point my dear students based on uh, a decided case study you now court told that power station substations won't come under the factory definition because there is no manufacturing process it's simply regulating the power regulating the power you know uh, increasing the capacity of power or reducing the capacity of the power switch on the power switch off the power so simply no manufacturing process is carried out that's why power station substations won't come under the definition of factory and then printing all types of printing comes under uh, manufacturing process construction of ships and vessels comes under manufacturing process and preserving articles in cold storage for long time for long time so for longer time we are preserving articles in cold storage that preserving also comes under the definition of a uh, manufacturing process so i told you factory three points three points prisons premises including prisons 10 or more workers 20 or more workers and some certain manufacturing process should be carried out now coming to the hazardous process hazardous process so what is this hazardous process sir you know any process or activity which is mentioned in first schedule of the industries so industry first schedule so process or activity which is specified in first schedule of the industry we call it as hazardous process and unless special care is taken you now without this special care you know what might happen sir using these raw materials you know producing intermediate products producing uh, finished products and by products or any ways it would cause material impairment to the health of the workers or pollution it may cause pollution to the general environment one small example sir metal grinding process or you know welding iron welding if you observe what happens sir noise pollution and so it creates lot of sounds lot of sounds it may cause impairment to the health of workers you know hearing problems it may create hearing problems permanent in nature and that noise it is disturbing the environment pollution of general environment so any process without taking special care if it cause impairment material impairment significant damage to the health of the workers or you know it causes pollution in general environment we call it as hazardous process additional safety measures to be taken on the workers who employed in this uh, process 
and we need to take we need to make special arrangements so that pollution should not happen general environment should not get affected so this is hazardous process next one duties of occupier duties of occupier occupier at least 15 days before opening factory 15 days before opening factory he need to file notice with chief inspector of the area you know person in charge to that area appointed by the government appointed by the government you need to file a notice with chief inspector you now that notice contains only four particulars name and address of the factory name and address of occupier and manufacturing process nature nature of manufacturing process and details of the workers who got employed in the industry so these details occupier should share with the chief inspector what is the time limit 15 days before opening a factory next one and whenever there is a change in the manager or whenever you appoint a manager within 7 days within 7 days of the event occupier should file information with inspector and a copy shall be sent to the chief inspector these are the duties of the occupier with respect to opening of factory with respect to appointment or change of a manager next one powers of the inspector powers of the inspector not chief inspector inspector so what an inspector can do sir he can enter into any place if he thinks that it is a part of the factory if, it, if he thinks that it's a part of the factory so he can enter into any place of the factory prior permissions are not required no need to take permission of occupier no need to take permission of uh, authority simply he can enter into any place of the factory next one examination of the premises plants and articles produced by the uh, factory so examination you know he conduct uh, he can conduct inquiry investigation examination of the premises plant and machinery articles next one he can inquire into any accident dangerous occurrence recently lg polymers case study you can observe or shivakasi crackers so no dangerous prone uh, uh, establishments so possibility that accident might take place suppose accident happened now inspector can enter into the place of the factory he can examine the plant and machinery that is uh, response that which is responsible for accident and you know he can collect statements from the persons at spot at spot he can collect these statements based on that he will prepare a report he will send that report to the higher officials so they will take action on the employer or occupier and he may ask production of few documents documents of the factory uh, related to licenses related to number of workers uh, have been employed uh, related to the workers uh, health conditions workers certificate of fitness so he may ask any document and he may take the documents into his possession or he may seize the documents not only these powers he can exercise additional powers as may be prescribed from time to time next one certified surgeons sir who are the certified surgeons sir you know qualified medical practitioners sent state government is having power to appoint certified surgeons but who will act as certified surgeons sir only qualified medical practitioners qualified medical practitioners shall be appointed as certified surgeons by whom sir state government you know mcq point of view important state government shall appoint uh, qualified medical practitioners as certified surgeons depending upon the area suppose in this area only one factory is there now i may appoint only one person or coming to the coimbatore many factories are there many factories many industries are well set up but the point one certified surgeon can't uh, carry all the operations that's why depending upon the nature of the manufacturing process number of enge number of factories in the area so state government shall appoint a requisite number of certified surgeons so what are the duties of the certified surgeon sir what are the duties of certified surgeon sir very simple examination and certification of young persons examination and certification of uh, young persons are they fit to this industry or not health conditions so yes mr w a worker with a uh, 17 years of age came to the factory so he need to work now certified surgeon will conduct a examination you know health body checkup health checkup and he will give certification he will give certificate he will certify so that certificate you know whether any person is suitable or not to that industry suitable he will give certificate of fitness based on that certificate of fitness employer will take that person into the job 
or into the factory next one examination of persons engaged in factories you know who are working on dangerous process dangerous machineries dangerous machineries so periodical examination periodical health checkup periodical body checkup not all the employees but workers who got engaged in dangerous process next one exercise medical supervision it's like a medical camp so they may conduct medical supervision in the following cases already I discussed this point young persons employed in any work this completed and two points in case of illness now what is the nature of the work what is the nature of work particularly in glass manufacturing companies glass manufacturing entities the smoke it emit is very dangerous if you take that smoke you know if you breathe it if you inhale that smoke it causes a serious respiratory problems so now few employees you know they fell sick reason manufacturing process now they may conduct medical supervision you know what is the nature of the work why this illness was caused and next one if whenever there is a change in manufacturing process or whenever new manufacturing process got adopted how it affects the health of the workers how it affects the health of the workers so by medical supervision they will prepare a report whether this new manufacturing process suitable or not change in manufacturing process acceptable or not if you want to accept it what kind of precautions you need to take for protecting employees for protecting workers from uh, protecting workers protection to the workers so these are the duties of the certified surgeons next one occupy responsibilities occupy responsibilities so the following are the occupy responsibilities ma health measures you need to take health measures of the workers safety measures welfare measures so chapter 3 4 and 5 so let's see health measures what comes under health measures sir? cleanliness so every factory must be kept clean and free from wastage free from effluvia removal of accumulated dirt and refuse so in a factory definitely after completion of uh, every run you know manufacturing process started at the end of the manufacturing you know once that machines we stop we stop the machines so there might you can observe you know accumulated dirt that dirt should be removed then only factory can be kept uh, clean so you need to clean the floor and every workroom next one you need to provide suitable arrangement should be provided for effective drainage so for cleanliness you know we had a chart and so every factory should be whitewashed or it should be color washed once in 14 months once in 14 months and coming to the surface is it a painted surface or washable surface sir painted surface now repair it or re-varnish it once in five years sir washable surface sir then clean it once in six months sir smooth impervious surface sir like a uh, uh, parking space parking lot or you know pavements sidewalk employees use this uh, surface for uh, uh, traveling from entrance to the factory entrance of the factory to the manufacturing uh, machines no machinery so if that surface is smooth impervious then clean it once in 14 months and you know all interiors doors windows they should be painted once in five years if you follow all these precautions if you are if you follow all these uh, things then factory will be kept in clean and and you know Occupy responsibility. They need to maintain registers whether these uh, these are carried out uh, on a periodical basis or not. Next one, you know, disposal of waste and effluents. Disposal of waste and effluents. For the time being, any factory requires water, you know, for uh, cleaning the raw material. So in that case, after cleaning, you know, whatever water you used. You should treat that waste before releasing to the into the environment. You need to treat that water. Water treatment plant should be there. So you need to separate uh, uh, chemicals from the water so that it won't be harmful to the society or it won't be harmful to the environment. Then only you need to dispose the waste. And you need to provide proper ventilation and temperature facilities. Proper ventilation. So adequate ventilation by circulating fresh air. By circulating fresh air, you know, come and install artificial fans, coolers, so that you know high temperature will definitely come down. So if you take metal grinding uh, manufacturing process, 
in the process of uh, grinding you know a lot of temper high temperature will be created so can you imagine worker employed in that process you know without uh, ventilation you know a lot of suffocation it leads to the health problems so that's why you need to uh, insulate some fans artificial uh, coolers so that the temperature will come down so it provides comfort to the workers then only workers health gets protected next one ma artificial humidification you know for humidification state government is having power to frame rules and regulations standards follow those rules standards next one overcrowding should be eliminated overcrowding should be eliminated uh, minimum 14.2 cubic meters of space should be provided minimum 14.2 cubic meters of space should be provided to the worker in each and every work room next one suitable arrangement should be made for sufficient and suitable lighting suppose our my factory it is having a uh, uh, windows you know glass windows so that sunlight can directly pass in that case the glass windows should be kept clean should be kept clean so any dust and fume on the glasses should be removed next one proper drinking water facility should be provided so drinking water facilities up to 250 workers you know provide drinking water but if 250 more than 250 workers are there then provide cool drinking water at the time of a uh, hot weather situations hot weather you know summer uh, this act came in the year 1948 in 1948 cool drinking water is a luxury right so that's why uh, we need to provide cool drinking water only in the factory which had more than 250 workers like that they kept a point because it is a luxury but nowadays you can observe any factory with 20 workers there is a cool drinking water facility okay so what is there in the material we need to follow that's why you know you need to remember this limit so more than 250 workers are there then facilities to be provided you know cool drinking water facility be to be provided during a summer season and you know water points the distance between water point and washing place or urinal place latrine place spittoon place so the minimum distance between these two places should be 6 meters of course everyone will follow it so proper drinking water facility should be provided next one latrines and urines so they should they should be kept clean once in 7 uh, days and spittoons simply you know wash basins wash basins coming to the next one so with this uh, health measures completed health measures completed next one safety measures safety measures you know fencing of machinery you know which are dangerous if you touch that machinery you know electric shock or your hand may burnt in that case you know proper fencing should be provided and you know you should uh, keep a dangerous symbol on that machinery skull two bones did you remember next one next one give training to the people who work on or near machinery in motions so machines Uh, for example small example a grinding grinder if you take grinder as an example it is in motion if you keep hand in the grinder without proper care there is a pros- probability that your hand may get fractured understood so give proper training to the people who work on or near machineries which are in motion employment of young persons on na- dangerous machines give them proper training so proper training and supervision should be given to the people who work on or near machinery in motion and employment of young persons on that dangerous dangerous machines next one safe provide safety appliances for ice so coming to the uh, iron manufacturing companies or coming to the metal binding process so obviously sparks will come out of that uh, process sparks now if you don't use a uh, uh, goggles what happens sir it may cause eye damage it may cause damage to the eyes that's why you know provide goggles or provide helmets for safety of eyes of the workers next one proper means of escape and fire fighting equipment suddenly fire accident took place now there should be emergency existence Emerg- sorry emergency exit and sufficient fire fighting equipment should be there so that we can mitigate the fire we can mitigate the loss next one all floors in the factory steps stair passages now they should be of sound construction 
this should be of sound construction so any damaged part immediately you should reconstruct it so that employees won't fell therefore employees get uh, protected next one appointment of safety officers so ensuring all safety measures are proper or not uh, so we need to appoint a uh, safety officers if organization is having 500 or more workers so these are the safety measures now coming to the responsibility of occupier with respect to safety with respect to safety measures what are the responsibility of occupiers so he should frame a detailed policy and he should explain the policy to the workers regarding their health and safety you know uh, before entering into the premises wear uh, suit wear gloves and wear uh, helmet like that detailed policy after completion of the work sanitize your hands for two minutes uh, for three minutes and clean the clothes which you wear which you wear during the manufacturing process so this is the policy you need to explain to the workers next one disclosure disclosure so danger is in the dangers dangers in the dangers in the manufacturing process health hazards and measures to take measures to be taken to overcome the above problems so in kind of danger suppose some uh, suddenly fire accident happened you know you need to take exit route emergency exit or you need to use uh, uh, fire fighting equipment so that fire can be mitigated dangers can be mitigated next one disclose the steps you know how to handle the materials how to transport the materials how to store the materials you know if they are hazardous materials you know it, it will cause impairment it will cause uh, health damage then how to handle them how to transport them how to store them you need to give series of instructions and draw on-site emergency plans and disaster recovery steps simply fire accident took place so emergency plan so for that you know conduct drills mock drills so that employees suddenly if any emergency any emergency happened employees they won't panic and they will take uh, they will follow the emergency plans they will follow disaster recovery steps next one lay down the measures for handling storing disposal of uh, hazardous substances suppose sulfuric acid or sulfur so don't touch it directly with a uh, layman hands so use proper gloves wear proper suit wear helmet then only store uh, touch the items so preserve the items dispose the items so these are the steps so uh, who will take care of all these activities are occupier it is the responsibility of the occupier that's why we studied the definition of occupier who is occupier one who had ultimate control over affairs of the factory next one powers of central government with respect to safety with respect to safety measures so what are the powers of the central government so central government is having power to set a standards with respect to health and safety with respect to health and safety and they can frame emergency standards and they will check whether factory is following all these emergency standards or not and they will fix the permissible limits of exposure of chemical and toxic toxic substances they will fix the limit beyond this you should not expose chemicals beyond this you should not use toxic substances in the factory or else it will it will affect the health of the workers and setting up of safety committees you know these committees will conduct a investigation or examination of the factories and they will prepare reports and they will forward reports to the central government based on that central government will fix health and safety standards now for example a worker age of 40 or more is prohibited from engaging in a dangerous manufacturing process so setting up age limits so only a person up to 40 years he can work in this factory after that he should not he is not he is not permitted to work into the he is not permitted to enter into the factory like that health and safety standards next one workers may give notice to the occupier with respect to dangers with respect to dangers to the health or their life now that notice you know central government will go through the notice and central government will use that notice in setting up uh, health and safety standards so central government is having power to educate workers to know about their uh, dangers to the life or life or health next one ma welfare measures almost two pages you know uh, simply I compiled in one page 
welfare measures so every factory should have one ambulance if uh, number of workers more than 500 if number of workers more than 250 canteen facility should be provided and expenses with respect to canteen expenses with respect to canteen who should bear sir obviously employer sorry occupier occupier has to bear that expenditure again occupier directing that amount from uh, worker salaries allowed or not allowed or sir not allowed not allowed next more than 150 workers then provide shelters restrooms lunch rooms and then drinking water facility full drinking water facility 250 workers more than 250 workers and for every 150 workers you need to provide first aid appliances you know first aid kit and more than 30 women more than 30 women in that case you need to provide crutches so that uh, women children less than six years of age they can have a, a place where I mean where women can take care of those uh, their children so simply crutches uh, it's a room for child of the woman so child up to age of six years they will be kept in the crutches and uh, whenever uh, they cry you know mom will take care of them mom will take care of the kids so crutches and 500 or more welfare officer should be appointed welfare officer should be appointed so limits are somewhat important so go through the limits and double employment is prohibited ma double employment is always strictly prohibited so what is meant by double employment you know worker he is working in factory a factory a and after completion of work in factory a is going to factory b in factory a he worked for 12 hours in factory b he worked for 12 hours so that is double employment double employment is strictly prohibited you know double employment within the factory is also prohibited suppose a uh, uh, eight hours supervisor eight hours a uh, worker eight hours uh, as a uh, in charge or a security guard permitted or not permitted as uh, are not at all permitted I repeat not at all permitted double employment in the factory per, uh, prohibited and double employment elsewhere also prohibited also prohibited so it is the responsibility of employee so he should not work two times in a day next one ma coming to the person so here the worker sometimes worker is an adult worker is a child worker is an adolescent so who is adult who is child who is adolescent say adult means who has attained age of 18 years adult means who has attained the age of 18 years young person again two types child adolescent so child with age of 14 to 15 years who has completed 14 years but not 15 years sir who has completed 15 years we call him as adolescent so that means child up to 14 years is strictly prohibited child up to 14 years is strictly he is strictly prohibited from the job understood my dear students so child labor act prohibition of child labor act so up to 14 years he is strictly prohibited so 14 to 15 we call him as child and 15 to 18 we call him as adolescent 18 and above adult so while recruiting child or adolescent occupier should verify the certificate of fitness who will issue certificate of fitness sir certified surgeons next one ma working hours timings and leaves so here i classified person into three categories adult adolescent child again you know adult male adult female adolescent male adolescent female child male child female maximum number of working hours per day working hours maximum working hours nine all cases nine coming to the child only four and off coming to the child only four and off coming to per week 48 hours so simply eight hours a day eight hours into six days 48 hours now anything extra anything you know more than 48 I call it as overtime for overtime M occupier should pay double wages double wages suppose for nine hours sorry for 48 hours I'll get 10 rupees per hour 10 rupees per hour now hours extra hours suppose I worked for 54 hours now how many hours are extra six hours for those six hours I use it to get you know I should be paid twice the normal wages that is two times of the 10 rupees 20 rupees in case of peace rated workers you need to convert that amount uh, into hourly basis suppose I manuf I manufactured some 10 items for that I got uh, 1000 rupees I got 1000 rupees I worked for eight hours 8 hours 10 articles 1000 that means hourly 125 rupees 
hourly 125 convert that piece rate into time rate how how many articles he produced in the last month how much amount he got and take standard hours so total amount divided by standard hours you will get time rate now apply the time rate so over time shall be paid how much twice the ordinary wages next rest, rest time ma. rest time half an hour half an hour so worker is not permitted to work complete nine hours at a stretch he should take break he should take break now after completion of three hours half an hour break three hours half an hour break so including a rest time and overtime he should not he should work for only 10 and half hours that means uh, entry time the difference between entry and exit time it should not be more than 10 and half hours it should not be more than 10 and half hours including rest time overtime 10 and half hours is permitted 10 and half 10 and half 10 and half so for child there is no that regular restriction and simply you know he work for four and half hours only four and half hours per day and maximum two shifts allowed two shifts allowed in case of child so both you know combination of these two shift including lunch break including rest time including overtime everything so five hours maximum a child can be uh, a child can work in the factory for five hours by the way who is the child Andy? who has attained age of uh, 14 years but not uh, completed 15 so 15 years not completed next one coming to the work time so male adult member any time any time so midnight 12 to next day midnight 12 but coming to the female adult she should not come to the factory before 6 a.m and she should not leave after 7 p.m that means you know work time is just you know 6 a.m to 7 p.m 6 a.m to 7 p.m and remaining people you know adolescent child for them you know 6 to 7 6 to 7 child male child 6 to 7 female child 8 to 7 8 a.m to 7 p.m here it is all 6 a.m to 7 p.m 6 a.m to 7 p.m 6 a.m to 7 p.m and next one live with wages ma live with wages it is a privilege ma it is a privilege a worker who worked for 240 days who worked for 240 days or more so total number of working days in the preceding calendar year if it is 240 days or more then he is uh, eligible to take leave with wages that means he can take leave but his salary won't get affected his wages won't get affected so coming to the ratio for every 20 days you worked you will be given one paid leave that means i work for 20 days in the month of uh, may i work for only 20 days now for 20 days i'll get extra one day so total wages is for 21 days 21 days understood ma that means i can take leave but my wages won't get disturbed so to all adults and adolescents the ratio is one for 20 days for every 20 working days you'll be given one leave with wage but coming to the child the ratio is 15 so simply i worked for 300 days i worked for 300 300 divided by 20 that means 15 i'll be given 15 days live with wages if i use them no problem if i don't use them carry forward option is available maximum how many days sir in case of adult adolescent 30 days in case of child it is a 40 days in case of child it is 40 days sir maximum 360 days a worker can work for 360 360 divided by 20 18 days only right now sir then how comes it is 30 carry forward how come it is 30 Are there might be some establishments they may fix like this you know one for 10 days or you know two for 20 days for every 20 days for every 20 days you work i'll give you two days live with wages in that case in that case take 360 divided by 20 into 2 you will get 36 but there is no obligation on employer to carry forward 36 days and the employer is having obligation only to carry forward 30 days not 36 so 30 days similar to the gratuity you know after computation total gratuity amount is uh, some 40 lakhs but employer is not having obligation to pay 40 lakhs employer will pay only 20 lakhs employer obligation to carry forward how many leaves and 30 30 but coming to the child uh, 40 days coming to the child 40 days so all these topics i covered ma just uh, give one small reading so case studies just one small reading so that you will know that points
so responsibility of occupier powers of the central government so all these 41 D 41 E 41 F next welfare measures so employment of women so employment of women 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. but if you want female workers between 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. state government permission is required state government allow you can you uh, you can uh, hire or you can recruit a uh, woman the timings between 10 p.m. to time timings between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. and then certificate of fitness is very important so certified surgeons will give certificate of fitness every 12 months ma every 12 months they will come and they will examine the workers if they are suitable workers are suitable they will get certificate of fitness based on certificate of fitness only occupier will recruit them occupier will recruit them so don't think that 12 months is fixed time period no uh, today i got certificate of fitness after one month i fell sick now once again examination will be carried out and certified surgeon will give certificate of fitness whether suitable or not suitable if not suitable should not be taken into the job clear next working hours of children registers you need to maintain registers annual leave with wages just now i told you annual leave with wages so eligibility who are eligible to get annual leave with wages persons who work for 240 days but while counting 240 while counting 240 these days shall be included these days shall be included layoff period uh, next one uh, agreement or contract as permissible under the standing orders next one female worker maternity leave a leave earned in the year prior in which uh, the leave is uh, enjoyed so all these days are considered as working days for the purpose of 240 but on these days you won't get any on these days you won't get any leave with wages suppose i worked for 200 days woman worker woman worker worked for 200 days and she took maternity leave of 60 days now total 260 condition 240 satisfied condition 240 satisfied now she will get leave with wages not on 260 but on 200 200 divided by 20 only 10 days that is the meaning of this uh, point don't get confused uh, so watch it again and read this point one more time you'll get clarity for the purpose of eligibility i'll consider all these days as working days but for the purpose of counting only the number of days he or she worked i will consider next carry forward of leave also completed availing leave availing leave suppose you want to take all the leaves at a time uh, work for 11 months without any leave so each month you got one leave ma for example you you are eligible for one leave with wages or okay take two point two two days so now 11 into 2 22 days i want to take all these 22 days leaves in the month of december now you need to intimate employee occupier how many days before sir at least 15 days you know you need to intimate the manager at least 15 days before the leave period and if you are engaged in public utility services you know municipal corporations or uh, electricity water supply if you are a worker in those uh, entities you know entities which provide public utility services in those cases 30 days prayer intimation is required suddenly you want to take a 22 days leave or you know some 30 days leave you need to intimate manager what is the time period no intimation required sir 15 days before leave period normal cases or if you are engaged in a public utility services then 30 days before uh, leave period you need to intimate uh, your your manager next uh, wages during leave period simply you want to surrender it or you want to take leave then you are eligible to take wages so at what price at what wage sir simple preceding calendar month what is your wage rate apply that wage rate on the days next one advance payment advance payment so if you are taking leave uh, four days or more you know in case of worker in case of child you know five days or more they can apply for advance payment they can apply for advance payments so next one week i'm not going to come to the organization so pay me in advance pay me my wages in advance generally work and then payment but in case of leave with wages even if you take leave you are eligible to take uh, wages so you can get advance payment but for that you know four days in case of workers five days in case of child if they are taking leave 
four days or five days then they can apply for advance payment also and cashment of leave simply I didn't use any leave with wages I work I'm working for all complete days so accumulated so total so far some hundred days accumulated over a period of four years hundred days accumulated now at the time of termination of service I can encash all these leaves I'll surrender these leaves sir hundred days I work without taking any leave sir now all these hundred days what is my last month drawn salary suppose last um, last month drawn salary per day per day hundred rupees now hundred days into hundred rupees ten thousand give it to me so when it should be paid by second working day second working day in case of termination of service by second working day so today I'm leaving from the organization I'm leaving the organization the second working day I should get my money next one penalties ma go through it penalties go through it so with this uh, factory sack marathon completed